Hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in today and welcome back to my channel. I'm Susan Lynn. I'm a psychic and a medium. And today you're tuning in to one of my video series called Way Out Wednesday or the acronym of WOW. <laughs> Thank you again for joining me. Today we're going to be talking about souls, specifically old souls versus or in comparison to new souls and even specifically starseed souls so this is all about souls today now if you're new here i am channeling this information i have no papers i have nothing no notes no nothing i will say that because this is a complicated subject for me anyway i did create a video visual that hopefully will help you see this or understand this in a new way because i'm a very visual person i felt like i needed this because the guides the only preparation i've done is my spirit guides uh basically said hello susan do this video talk about you you've done videos i've done videos where i've talked about star seeds that is a common term and everybody has sort of a different definition of it and for it I would say in my lexicon or in my worldview or my understanding of star seeds, which I am one, is a new soul to earth. I am a relatively old soul, but I'm pretty new to the earth plane. According to my Akashic Records reading, I've had four or five lifetimes here, not only on earth, but in the Milky Way system. I don't know why it was important to say that. but so I'm a really new soul here, and I've done videos on how to understand if you're a starseed. You can look them up in my playlist. If you click the logo, you'll go to my main channel page. You can find playlist, and you can find all kinds of interesting videos there in the WOW playlist, but also in other playlists, okay? So because I've done a lot of videos on starseeds, what it's like to be a starseed, how do you know if you're a starseed? Uh, you know, those types of things, which I think are helpful to know. I wanted to do a video on, well, what is an old soul? You know, it's so interesting, isn't it? How we humans use kind of these spiritual terms in our lives, but we never think twice about it. We look at a baby and we go, that's an old soul. What are we talking about? How do I even know this is an old soul? Baby's four months old, you know, and we're over there pronouncing that's an old soul right there. Or maybe you even meet a five-year-old and you say that's an old soul. But what's interesting is we don't ever see an 18-year-old and go, that's an old soul. How come, right? Why do we stop, you know, saying this after a kid gets a certain age? right? Is it because in our younger years, we're more connected to spirit and, and, and other people, be they parents or friends or strangers, can see that, can witness that, can say, wow, I can see this baby's connection to spirit. And I can see that this baby has an old soul. Isn't it something about how they look? Don't we look into their eyes and say, that's an old soul. You know, it's not about really so much sometimes about their character or their actions. It's something about their energy, right? So today we're going to talk about old souls. And I really want to talk about it because as I'm, I'm always learning, if you're new here, I'm, I'm teaching, I'm here sharing this information, generally speaking, because I just learned it myself. And I thought, huh, I wonder if other people would like to know that. <laughs> so for me, as a psychic and a medium and a practicing and professional psychic and a medium, you know, I, I run across people all the time and I think, wow, that person's energy is quite interesting or, or quite odd sometimes. But anyway, that's another video. Uh, but sometimes I meet people and I think, now this I have to do some explaining because I, I've said this to people and it is alarming, I have to say, but <laughs> um, I don't mean for it to be alarming, but it's hard to explain. And what I say to some people is, you're not very human. 
<laughs> now, of course, that does sound alarming. Like, like, wait a minute, you know, what do you mean? My name is Fred and I'm from Indianapolis. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm as human as it can get, right? But what it means is energetically, energetically, when I see certain people and I just and, and honestly, I don't go around, and you shouldn't either, to be honest with you, uh, trying to see people's energy because it's exhausting and you don't want to do that. And sometimes you want to also clean your eyes out with bleach. So I don't suggest that. But let's say I'm doing a reading for someone, right? And I'm I'm tuning into their energy because I have permission and this is part of my job. And I tune into their energy and I think, wow, this person is not very human. So that used to trip me up. Because, well, not not for the obvious reason, which is like, dang, Susan, are you reading aliens or are these people aliens? Or, well, you know, I can see all of you going, tell me more, right? No, it's not like that. It, it You know, listen, um, there are people that I believe <laughs> have some alien influences in them. We're not going to go into that right now. But these people that I see are not human. It's it's sort of like I, I got tripped up and I would think that they were star seeds. Okay. Because look, I've got four lives here. How human can I be? Right. I, I was not all that long ago. I was a frog. Right. So you just got to watch the videos to know what I'm talking about. Um, but you know, I've had experiences as aliens. I, I, I know this, I've had past life readings, I've done them myself where I'm, Hey, I'm an alien pilot on a ship. You know, um, I've had other past lives where I was a monk, where I was, you know, a human, in different human forms doing different things. So how human am I, right? So I assumed, we all know what's wrong with, with assuming. Some of you guys know what that means. You make an ASS out of you and me, if you've ever heard that old saying. I assumed that because these people seemed not very human to me, that they were star seeds. Guess what? They're not. They're old souls. Okay. Now that, if that didn't blow your mind, well, it blew a few circuits in my brain because how could someone that's been incarnating here on earth for say 400 or 500 lifetimes not feel human? Well, that made me sit down and really scratch my head and have a conversation with my spirit guides. Like, okay, what's going on here? So, and and honestly, it, you know, you guys all think that I talk to my spirit guides like in, I do talk to them in real time, but when you're talking about a very complicated, and for me, you know, maybe it's just me, right? But it was complicated for me. It was a very complicated subject. I, I had a hard time sort of understanding it. And so, how they gave me this information, because this is helpful too. It's not like we sat down and I grabbed a cup of coffee and which never mind, I'm going to talk about that anymore because now I can't drink coffee. It's like they're taking all the luxuries. I don't know. Anyway, I digress. It's not like I sat down and had a glass of water with my spirit guides and said, you know, can you explain this to me? And they just like bloop downloaded it into my brain. That is not what happened. What happened was they broke this lesson up into I think over a month and sometimes it would be a, a day where I would have, Oh, there's a piece to the puzzle that, that, that makes sense. And then I could ponder, think about that piece of the puzzle. And then sometimes at night I would be asleep and I would wake up with another piece of the puzzle, put those two pieces together. Okay. I'm starting to get the picture here. You guys, this took like a month for them to give me all of these little pieces in this video that I'm probably going to give you in like 30 or 45 minutes, because for whatever reason, this is the way I needed to have the information given to me or fed to me. I needed to have a piece and, and ruminate and think about it, have another piece, ruminate and think about it. Part of that is me, how I operate, right? That's just how I assimilate information. Someone else may assimilate it completely differently. And that's why I want you to understand. I know I talk to my guides all the time and they're talking to me right now, but it's it's not as, as um, see right now, I can't even get the word they use. They used a word streamlessly, which is not a word. Um, and I don't even know what the word is right now. 
I know it's a word I know, but because they have half of my mind, I don't know what it is. Seamlessly, seamlessly. See, so I got that word wrong. I heard streamlessly. The word is seamlessly, right? So, okay, let's talk about this. Why, if you're an old soul, do you present to me as not being very human? And what does that mean? What, what are you saying, Susan? People told me I was an old soul when I was a child. Now you're trying to say I'm some kind of weird alien. I thought it was a good thing. And now all of a sudden I'm a, I'm a weirdo. I'm a monster, right? No, that is not true. I'm about to explain it to you. I hope. Now, I'm telling you, for me, it's complicated. For you, maybe it's not. Maybe the guides will be able to explain it in a way that is really simple and makes sense. I'm going to put a... I'm going to put a video on the screen, I hope, (laughs) that describes this. I'm fascinated by the idea that two extremes become very similar. Okay, take a look at this image on your screen. The first thing I want you to notice is on the left side, you'll see old soul, new to earth, less than 10 lives. You see that red little pin um, dot there. And then on the right side, right next to it is the old soul, approximately 500 plus lives. See how they're right next to each other? They have more in common with each other. Then if you go to the top of the screen, you'll see middle of average lifetimes. Let's just say 250 lifetimes or incarnations. You can see that looking at this diagram, that the old soul, which is new to earth, or a new earth soul, either one, and they're different, have more in common with the old soul than the middle of the average incarnating human. This is what I'm trying to describe here. They're not the same at all, but they have some overlap. They, they're closer in vibration and understanding in some ways than at any other time of the reincarnation life cycle. The extremes of anything, because if you look at a circle, they, they, they're the extremes of each other become very similar. When you go so far one direction, you end up meeting the extreme of the other direction. But they have a little bit of overlap. They almost start to meet each other, okay? Now, how does that make sense with star seeds and with old souls? Because what I'm saying is star seeds are, in many ways, have much more connection to their alien or whatever species that came from in their human body, in their human DNA. Now, I see old souls having gone through the whole process of evolution, evolution of, of incarnating in human souls for 400 or 500 times. Every time they incarnate, they're perfecting. They're, 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 they're working through the human condition. Think about it. If you've been incarnating on this earth for 400 times, you've done it all. You've been male, female, you've been powerful. You've been, you know, less powerful or absolutely, you know, zero power. You've been every particular race. You've been, you've, you've incarnated in many countries. You've incarnated with money, without money. You've incarnated as a religious person, not as a religious person, perhaps as straight, perhaps as gay, uh, perhaps as a mean person, perhaps as a nice person, perhaps as an evil person, perhaps as a good person. You've incarnated in all times of physical, all ways of physical ableness. You've incarnated as a person that would be physically disabled. You've incarnated as a person who perhaps was blind. You've incarnated as a person who was a well-respected sports person. 
you've, if you've done 400 lifetimes on this planet, which sounds like prison, if you've done 400 lifetimes in, on this planet, you've experienced the extremes. You've experienced all the lifetimes in between those extremes. And you've evolved. You've evolved every time. Okay. So by the time you get to 400, 500 lifetimes, you're not bothered by, you know, stupidity, so to speak, right? Or by, you know, you're just, you're just not bothered by things. You're not reactionary is what the guides would say. You're not very reactionary. You're like, yeah, whatever, you know, yeah, whatever. You're just not, you're nonplussed. You're like, oh. Because you've been here and done it 400 times. Now, through that process of evolution, you're not reaction, you're not going to be reactionary, which brings you more and more to this place of almost non human, right? Because humans are, you know, by our nature, many of us are judgmental or are jealous or are, you know, loving or whatever it is that we are, but we're, we're certainly reactionary, right? But the way I see old souls is that they just don't buy into it. They just, they're not so judgmental. They're not very judgmental at all. They don't have a lot of fear around things. They don't, they don't have a lot of worry around things. They're really just kind of solid in that sense. They're very solid people. It's very hard to get them off of their center. You can do it. You can certainly do it. They're still human. But because they've been shaped by so many lifetimes, they really start to take on this energy. To, to me, it's just not human. It's sort of like, I mean, I don't want to describe it. Um, it's sort of like a, um, I don't know how to describe it visually, but they're, but they don't look, they just look, let's use this. Okay. The guides are saying, use this Description. So like an like an old wizened elder. Think about that. Think about a your idea of an old wizened female or male elder. And they're just able to sit there, you know, and not be bothered. And people go to seek sage advice from them, right? Because they have they because they have the memory of all of these things that have happened and these younger people are going hey i i would like to know what you think because you've lived through so many decades maybe they're 100 years or 110 years old well in this case you're 400 years old you're 450 years old and you can imagine that if you have experienced some of these things like being handicapped or being, you know, not handicapped and being very prosperous and being very poor and being persecuted for who you are to being the person who can persecute others. By the time you get to be an old soul, you've seen it, you've done it, you've experienced, you got the t-shirt, right? And that's why they just feel and look differently to me. Now, I need, so now how is that similar to a star seed? Well, because star seeds are not very human either. So that's, that's the only thing we have in common. When you get to the bottom of that, of that wheel, that's the only thing we have in common. It's where the life begins and it's where the life ends, where the old soul comes and the new soul starts. That's what we have in common. 
is that we're not very human. Now, what do we we not what we don't have in common, which is a lot. Star seeds are reactionary. Star seeds are like, whoa, what is going on in this crazy place? Everybody hates each other. They're killing each other. What are they doing to the environment? Uh, what is this? Why, what is their fascination with money? And what is their fascination with power? And why do they have to talk so much? Why can't they read each other's minds? Right? There's just a lot of angst with star seeds because uh they're in they're they're in they've they've been a, a fish or an animal that's been put in a completely new environment that does not agree with them, does not agree with them at all. So a lot of star seeds will check out their first year, their first life here on earth, they might not even complete it. Their second life, they may not complete it. They may leave. They may ask for a walk-in soul. They may decide to drop out of society and live on the land, or they may drop out of society and use drugs and alcohol to cover up the fact that they can't stand it here. It takes a few lifetimes generally for them to sort of get with the program. Okay. Okay. I'm starting to get used to it. You know, it's sort of like if you're wearing something, clothing that's uncomfortable, maybe the third time, or they're showing me shoes. Sometimes back in the day when we all wore leather shoes, you would, you would have to break them in. You know, you, you knew, right? The first several times you wore those shoes, you were going to be in pain. But eventually the leather would shape around your foot and then they would be very comfortable. That's a very apt analogy for how star seeds sort of finally get going with things. Now I've done videos on star seeds. Why are they here? Well, because I came here with a different vibration, a very different vibration. So if I don't do anything but sit under a tree and nap or check out in some way, I'm still, my vibration is still affecting my surroundings and really planet earth. So we don't really need to do anything per se. Our, our vibration is really important. Once we kind of get get our wits about us, then we we do start doing things, but it's all parts of it are important. Now, what is, so you, you hopefully have already figured out what the importance of an old soul is. The importance is, is that there are elders. They're the ones that keep us hopefully balanced, right? They, they're nonplussed. They're not going to be reactionary. They're very, um, you know, and maybe that makes uh, other types of souls, you know, irritated. Why don't you stand up? Why don't you go out there and march in the streets? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Well, they don't have to. They've already done that. They've already they've already been there and done that, right? So these old souls are super important because I the, what the guides are saying is they hold the energy of the earth, whereas us new star seeds we're bringing in new energy that that is disruptive, okay? Because because it's sort of like breathing new life into something is kind of what they would say. But new life can sometimes be a little disruptive, right? The new person at the party that talks too loud and is, you know, anyway, that's another video too. But whereas whereas we're bringing in new energy, new life, new vibration, the old souls are maintaining. They're they're keeping they're keeping uh, they're very important in keeping the earth and the earth or the vibration of humans the status quo. They're very it's important. Um, they would be talking about old souls keeping the vibration stable while the souls in between. So if we go back to that circle, right, we've got souls that go all the way around. You know, we have the 100 lifetime souls, the 200 lifetime souls, the 300 lifetime souls. We've got all these souls that are learning that are incarnating and learning and incarnating and learning, those souls are creating a lot of havoc, right? Because they're learning. They may have an incarnation where they have a lot of power and they may be misusing it. They may have an incarnation where they um, don't have any power 
and they are very, they act very, they act out about not having power. So they disrupt the power structure, right? So it's, it's all about a mixing of energy. It's mixing of energy. It's destabilizing. It's all destabilizing. And then we have these old souls that are sort of like the biggest trees that have the deepest roots that ground everybody, that keep everybody grounded. The star seeds, all the souls, you know, going through their um, their incarnations. The old souls are what ground everybody else. Now, I want to talk to you because um, I this came up last night in the middle of the night when they were talking to me. Which if I would meditate more, they wouldn't do that. So if you find yourself up in the middle of the night, don't know why. The reason is because they want to talk to you. And if you would meditate and give them another opportunity to talk to you when it's not two in the morning, they would probably take that. But anyway, they wanted me to talk to you guys about what what keeps an evil soul from becoming an old soul. And are all old souls good? Right. I mean, if all you got to do is do your time here on planet Earth and you know, mark 450 of those things on the wall, <laughs> you know, 450 incarnations on the wall, then what's to keep a really terrible soul from becoming an old soul? And why is an old soul a good soul or are they? So I would say to you that this is, again, I often want to tell you guys I am one data point, right? Mark me down as one data point. Go do your other research. Meditate, get your own answers. Um, Add my information to all those things. And if it makes sense, great. If it doesn't make sense for you, then it's just like something you try on at the store. Put it back on the rack. Go find something else that makes more sense. But what I'm seeing, what they're telling me now And there is seriously an orb flying around. I don't know if it's going to show up on the video or not, but dust doesn't fly around. I'll say that. Um, What they want to talk about is, so this this is the complicated part, but it's really important. Let's say, right, I've mentioned this. We've talked about this before. Expert. Sometimes they talk about expert souls. They don't mean old souls, okay? And expert is really a human term. It's, 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 we're translating from non-physical to human language. It's just like if I was translating something from French to English, I might have to use a, a word that isn't exactly the same word in French, but it's as close as I can get. So advanced, expert, whatever you want to call it, advanced souls uh, are souls that This is so complicated and it really needs to be a whole nother video because this is going to be like an hour and a half long. Okay. Really quickly. Let's see if I do it really quickly. Okay. Okay. When you're born, when you're born, there are certain things that are set in stone, right? Your birth time, your birth date, your astrology set in stone, your parents set in stone, your DNA set in stone, your numerology set in stone. Now, Within within that set in stone, which is probably not the right terminology, you have some play. That's why it's not stone. Um, you have some play. They were showing me a joystick. So the joystick would be the fact that you were born on this date, this time, and this is your astrology. That is, it is what it is. In some ways, that is stone. Now, however, Within that predetermined, fixed aspects of your personality, you have some play. You have a joystick. You have some play. Because we know that we can be an Aries and we could be a low, a medium, or a high vibrating Aries. Same thing with any sign. You can can just be down here with the base 
or you can kind of raise yourself up or you can be the highest that 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 sign or that conglomeration or configuration of astrological inputs okay so you have some wiggle room there okay all right note that now let's say that i pick my parents I got my astrological information. I've got my numerology information. Um, I've got a lot of set, fixed things about me. And I've got my DNA. Maybe my my dad was an alcoholic. Maybe he was a gambler. Maybe he was brilliant. Maybe my mother was a concert pianist, or maybe she was brilliant. Whatever it is, I've got this DNA that's coming down to me. Okay? Now, within those fixed things, I can decide to take my brilliance and become a loan shark. Oh man, making all the money in the world because remember, I've got this this gambling father and I realized, hey man, I'm not going to gamble my money away. I'm going to loan my money to these big dummies that are gamblers. I'm going to make a lot more money. So now I've taken this energy and I've decided that I'm going to use it in this way. You know, they always say, use your power for good. Well, you can use your power for bad too. So in my in my incarnation as a game, as a loan shark, well, on occasion I gotta bust some people up because they didn't pay me. Well, that lowers my vibration lower. I realize I can make a lot more money if I loan to more people and I just don't care if I ever think they can pay it back because I know that I can be violent and I can get that money back, lowers my vi- vibration more. I spend that whole lifetime sinking lower. Now I could have taken those preset, predetermined, fixed things about me, my, my personality, my DNA, my astrology. And I could have said, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to be brilliant. I'm going to go and solve something. I'm going to f- create a cure for something. I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, whatever. I'm going to use my power for good. There's your room and your joystick. Okay. Now let's say this guy, he keeps singing lower and lower and lower. And now oh, that's it, man. He made a lot of money. He hurt a lot of people, but he made a lot of money and he crosses over. All right. That life is done. Now, He's planning for the next life. And he's like, yeah, well, I kind of slid off. You know, I kind of slid into the mud on that one. You know, I really liked the money. I liked the popularity. I really liked the power. You know, I I would like to reincarnate and kind of have that opportunity to have power and be popular. But I would like, I think I can do it. You know, I think I can go in there and have those same personality traits. And I can use them for good, right? So we're always optimistic when we're up there, right? He comes back down and mm, not so good, right? Does the same thing. Except for this time, he's a titan. You know, he's a titan of industry. He He's not, you know, knocking people in the head with a baseball bat, but he's taking advantage of the environment. He's taking advantage of people. He's racking up the money and he's got all the power. His vibration is not very high because he basically is using people. So that's two lifetimes where he succumbed is the word they want to use to the power. He succumbed to that. And what what they show me is, is that it's almost like you're creating a rut, an energetic rut. If you keep coming back to life, to the same, you keep reincarnating and you, and you just dig the rut deeper instead of overcoming those those tendencies right so let's say this guy does four lifetimes in a row where every time maybe he's more successful and maybe even it's society even says hey you're you're we really look up to you however the reality is his company is polluting the river and he's not treating his workers well right so he's got four lifetimes where he's his vibration just is down here because he's succumbing to wanting the power and wanting the popularity and wanting the money. So let's say on the fifth lifetime, he's like, you know what? 
I need to help myself. <laughs> I, I can't help it. I get into there and I it's too easy for me because I've created a rut. I've created an energetic rut, right? Because I keep doing the same thing over again. How do I get out of this energetic rut? Well, we're going to have to change up how you incarnate. We're going to have to change it up. We're going to have to give you um, less, you know, auspicious beginnings, right? We're going to have to make you poor. We're going to have to make you in a challenged situation. And we're just, we're going to, we're going to give you the brains. We're going to give you the charisma, but we're going to take away some of these other things. Maybe, maybe, maybe you'll be able to do something different with this set of circumstances, right? Maybe in that lifetime, he's like, wow, I, no matter what I do, maybe he's born a different race that's not respected. And he's like, gosh, I'm smart. I'm charismatic, but I just can't get ahead, right? I can't get any respect here. I'm really finding it hard to get anywhere. And maybe he spends his whole life trying to get somewhere, but he doesn't quite really get it. Um, now, what has he done? He's kind of come out of the rut and he's kind of, kind of trekking in a new direction, right? He's creating a new direction. Maybe the next life he comes down and he, and he remembers how nobody respected him and nobody would give him an opportunity. And so he comes into this next life and he's like, yeah, I'm going to help people because I've been there, right? I've been there. I, rem I, he, you don't remember the past lives, but it greatly affects you. It's almost like a filter. Um, it's almost like an energy overlay. And, and you, and if you don't look into your past lives, this stuff affects you, be it good or bad. And it's really a good idea to know a little bit about your past lives because if there's a pattern that's like this guy, four times he was having these problems. Had he done a past life regression and said, oh man, I've been a jerk for four past lives. I think I, maybe I could turn it around, right? Um, so this guy, he's like, you know what? I'm gonna help people. I'm, and, and so maybe- he literally jumped out of that rut that he was in and started this new trajectory and then just took it up. That's an advanced soul, a soul that can really have these challenges. Now, you might be thinking like, this guy was a jerk and he was a titan of business and he didn't have challenges. Well, he did have challenges in the sense that he was challenged to not be a jerk and he couldn't do it. So they changed up his, his beginnings, his, you know, maybe they changed up his parents or his money or his support, his race, the country of origin, whatever. Gave that guy an opportunity to see things a little differently. It took him two lifetimes, but that second lifetime, he was able to really turn it around. Now from there, he's going to continue typically to do higher vibration things. He's not as likely, they're saying, to fall back into that negativity because it took so much to learn to get out of that rut. His soul really learned the lesson. Okay, so when you're a soul that continues to grow and grow and grow and experience, and, and be willing to come back here and say, yeah, I want a life where I'm going to be destitute. I want a life where I'm going to be abused, I, you know, physically abused, whatever. I want a life where I'm going to have some big losses. This life, I just want to chill out. I just want a bland life. Nothing big. But when you continue to come back here 400 times and you're willing as a soul to say, yeah, I want to experience this. The good, the bad, the ugly. Heck yeah. By the time you've been here 450 times, you're an old soul. You're an advanced soul. You're an expert soul. Now, why do 
or how or why do souls that are evil or bad, how come they never make it to an advanced soul? How come they never make it to an old soul? Because the way I understand it, folks, if you're going to be evil, now this again, this is a whole nother video. People come here for reasons, right? You, you may come here, read the book, Journey of Souls by Michael Newton, PhD. Just read the book. It'll help you. It'll catch you up. You'll be, you'll understand. But you may come here to be an SOB, to be a jerk, you know, to be a woman who's a jerk. I mean, it's not that all this is men. You, you came here to be a woman who was a terrible person, a terrible mother, a terrible friend. You came here to be terrible. That is your assignment. Some people take it too far. I still think that murder is not something that you come here to do. I think it's something that humans do because they have free will. You may come here and your assignment is to be pushy, to be terrible, to be ornery, to be mean. Um, and then that kind of starts going to your head and, 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 you know, maybe you also experience impatience. And so before you know it, you've gone too far. That's the key going too far. Some people, some humans go too far. That's over their assignment. Your assignment wasn't to do this. You went too far. What happens when you go too far? Well, when you cross over, you have to have some remediation of your soul. There seems to be some message about if, if this is a new, again, think back to that guy with the rut. He had one life. He could have changed it, but he didn't. He had two, he had three, he had four. He created this rut. That's a different thing the guides are saying. If this soul went too far and it was their first lifetime doing this, going too far, then they're going to, you know, they're going to do some light remediation and put you back in the game, so to speak. If this is your fourth time going too far, if this is your, you know, 15th time, 15th lifetime of going too far, then yeah, this isn't really going to be fixable. We're, we're going to have to take you out of circulation. <laughs> we're going to have to take you off of the human earth plane. And we're going to have to probably put you in a different existence for a while where you have less free will you have more guardrails you have you you really can't go outside of these guardrails because that particular existence it's not possible i mean it's not possible the interesting thing about earth is is that we're a dualistic planet which means you can do anything we we have black and white we have up and down and you, you have free will you can do a lot of things okay that makes it that that makes it in and of itself this planet an expert planet because think about we're going to put this soul here we don't know what they're going to do they can do anything literally anything what's keeping them from doing anything not much maybe some laws maybe some police not much so a soul that has gone too far even 15 times just isn't isn't going to make it. Now, let's say, I mean, they're just not going to make it to an old soul. End of story. They're never going to make it. Now, an old soul can be, again, back to that expert soul or that advanced soul, an old soul likely overcame something like that. An old soul likely had a few lifetimes where maybe they were a scoundrel. Maybe they were uh, a criminal. Maybe they were abusive. But they worked their way out of it. They learned the lesson. And let me tell you, an old soul, the soul of an old soul is amazing. It's, it's, it's um, well, I mean, think about it, 450 lifetimes of every kind of life you can you can imagine and some you probably can't imagine imagine being a soul that's lived through that that's decided to come back 
and do it again and again and again. Right? That's that's amazing. So yeah, next time you see a little baby and you say, that's an old soul. Maybe now you have a little bit of a different idea of exactly what kind of person they are, what kind of person they're going to be, right? So let me know if this has made any sense whatsoever to you guys. I am channeling. I don't know what I just said. Um, I honestly don't know what I just said. And interestingly enough, sometimes when you guys make comments, I don't know what you're talking about. (laughs) Even if you're specific and you say, um, like uh, recently I talked about in a political video about a um, solar eclipse. And you guys were commenting about the the next solar eclipse is this and the next solar eclipse is that. And I'm like, why are y'all telling me about solar eclipses? (laughs) And finally, I've the guides were like, because you talked about it. Sometimes I get mad. I'm like, I never said that in a video. I never, I never said that. And they're like, "Mm, yeah, you, you said it. I'm like, I did. And they're like, yeah. I'm like, well, then you said it. I didn't say it. And they said, yeah, we said it. (laughs) And so when I say, I know I often say, did it make any sense? That is why I say this, because it's disconcerting for me to have talked for 30 or 45 minutes. And honestly, besides what I just said, the last three sentences, I don't know what I said. And and I really, the Virgo in me wants it to make sense. So listen, (laughs) I will watch it and make sure it makes sense before I post it. But uh, let me know what you think in the comments. I enjoy your comments. You guys are the best commenters, especially on my wow videos share your experiences. Um, You know, absolutely. Let me know if you think you're an old soul. Let me know if you think one of your kids is an old soul. Let me know why you think that. Let me know, you know, what are the the personality traits or what are the things that you've seen them do that that lead you to believe it? And I just want to say this. They want me to say this. Star seeds are not whiners. We're not complainers. We're not babies. Uh, We are new souls here on earth but we're very old souls in the planetary, uh, in the, in the I don't know what you want to call it, the freaking galactic existence is what they want to call it. So in some ways, we're really old souls and we have a lot of those same, see, this is what I'm saying, we're the same, right? We have a lot of the same traits as an old human soul, but they would be more applicable to the galactic and not so applicable to our human incarnation. Okay. I don't know why they were like, man, you made, you made star seeds sound like a bunch of whiners. We're, we're really not, we're, we have a very hard uh, job here. We um, new souls on earth that aren't star seeds. Is that even possible? Wait, hold, hold the, hold the, hold what Uh, that makes my head hurt. Um, are, are they still making new souls? Are they still minting new souls on the assembly line? Or are they out? Because I know I see a line, a queue of souls wanting to get on planet Earth because this is the be- This is like special forces. This is like the best place. Um, you can experience so much here. So I see this queue of souls wanting to come in. But I assumed, there's that, uh, there's that word again. I assume this queue were souls from other galaxies. Okay, they are souls from other galaxies. Okay, so so my visual, I'm seeing a queue of souls that just goes forever. Uh, like you would line up to, you know, get tickets for a concert or a game or something. Now, when I talk about new souls, like brand new souls, never been anywhere, never been on earth. Is that possible? Wait just a minute. I don't know, y'all. That's for a whole nother video. I can't be talking. I'll be talking for two hours about this stuff. They're still minting new souls. That is so crazy. I think they are. Comes from a different place. There's no line. It's a different, it's like, well, you know, from up there, they come down. They're still minting new souls. 
That's a trippy thing. Okay, I didn't even know that, y'all. Okay, I'm going to stop this video now because you. this is me talking to my guys. We'll be here for three more hours. And uh, probably, you know, who knows where we'll end up. Um, <laughs> another topic for another video. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate you guys. You don't know how much I appreciate you. Please let me tell you how much I appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is my soul path. I was late to it kind of um i'm not gonna say all that uh but i'm here i'm doing it i'm happy to be here i'm honored to be here thank you for your support from my heart thank you so much take really good care we'll talk again next wednesday if not before take really good care everybody